right? It's been 17 days since Israeli occupation forces uh, continued their bombing of the Gaza Strip uh, since Hamas launched Operation Al-Aqsa Flood on the 7th of October. On Sunday, when we didn't uh, come to you on Daily Debrief, uh, over 400 people were killed uh, in attacks just on that day alone in, in what's been described uh, as the heaviest single day of bombing on the besieged uh, strip. Operations have also moved to the West Bank where close to 100 people have been killed and hundreds, uh, over a thousand, have been arrested since October 7th. Uh, we'll talk about all of this, of course, it's our lead story as it has been uh, consistently on Daily Debrief uh, since uh, October 7th. Uh, we'll also ask uh, Abdul, who's covering uh, Gaza for us today, uh, what exactly is happening on the aid front and where is the rest of the world? Uh, our our uh, show today concentrates completely uh, on events in Gaza. Anna will be joining us later on, uh, where she will be talking about solidarity rallies across Europe, uh, particularly massive rallies held in London and Brussels, the European uh, capital, as it were. Uh, salams, you're watching Daily Debrief, brought to you as always by People's Dispatch. Before we go any further, take a second and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as I was saying earlier, uh, it's been 17 days of continued uh, bombing, airstrikes uh, ongoing against various targets. The Israeli Defense Forces said that they hit over 300 targets, supposedly all associated with Hamas uh, in Gaza. 60 people have been killed so far at the time of going to recording uh, on Monday. On Sunday, uh, reports indicate that as many as 400 Palestinians lost their lives in the strikes. Uh, Abdul joins us today after a few days uh, to, uh, and he's of course regularly covering West Asia as well as Palestine for People's Dispatch. Abdul, good to have you back on the show. Um, first of all, as we have been uh, giving our viewers an update of events uh, since we last spoke, we of course don't have a show on Sunday, so you have the entire weekend to cover for us. Well, uh there are many things which have happened in all these three days, uh, including one of the most intensive uh, days of bombing on Sunday. Uh, as per the reports uh, from the ground, it seems that this was the, as you rightly pointed out during the introduction, that more than 300 targets uh, inside the Gaza Strip were uh, kind of bombed by Israeli war planes, and more than 400 people were killed. Uh, all across the Gaza Strip, uh, apart from it, the fact that this is the day uh, Israeli uh, occupation chose to also intensify its aggression against the Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. Uh, so it seems that uh, uh, Israel is uh, refusing to understand the, the, the central question which uh, Palestinian resistance has raised ever since uh, they launched Operation Al-Aqsa Flood, saying that uh, the, the repeated violations of human rights in the occupied territories need to be uh, curbed. Uh, Israel refuses to learn that, and in, uh, apart from committing a genocide in the uh, uh, Gaza, the, they continue to uh, have the similar kind of repressive uh, practices which they had before uh, the, the Gaza offensive started. Uh, earlier uh, uh, this month. So uh, this is one. Uh, there is There are also reports that uh, the, it seems that the, uh, the confrontation which uh, Israeli uh, regime was not uh, kind of uh, claiming on the northern uh, uh, borders with Lebanon has also intensified during the weekend. Saturday was one of the days when the, the largest number of, uh, you can say, uh, uh, clashes between the Hezbollah and uh, uh, the Israeli uh, forces were recorded. More than uh, six uh, Hezbollah fighters were killed, uh, and uh, uh, Hezbollah also targeted uh, different uh, uh, centers uh, in uh, Israel. Um, 
uh, it seems that uh, 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 the uh, what uh, Chinese were claiming, Chinese representative in the uh, in West Asia basically said that they want ceasefire at any cost and they are ready to do whatever uh, is required to be done to achieve that uh, ceasefire, uh, primarily to prevent uh, the war to become regional. If you see, and that is a real threat, it's emerging. So apart from Hezbollah kind of uh, intervening uh, uh, on behalf of Palestinians, on behalf of Lebanese uh, uh, grievances, there is also uh, another regional force uh, in Yemen, uh, uh, Ansar Allah, the Houthis, they have also kind of claimed that if uh, Israel continues to uh, uh, pursue its genocidal policies inside occupy, uh, oc occupied Gaza, they will uh, uh, they will also start uh, targeting the Israeli uh, uh, war uh, war ships in in the Red Sea. So that seems that there are multiple uh, 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 theaters which kind of emerging in the last uh, which has emerged in last three days at least, and that basically puts uh, the risk of uh, the, the, the war in Gaza becoming a regional uh, war. And that basically is uh, one thing. The one last thing uh, about when it comes to update is that uh, it seems that the, the, the ground offensive, which Israeli army was kind of claiming to, uh, to kind of start uh, earlier uh, 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 before the weekend, it seems it has been delayed. For various reasons, apart apart from the fact that the uh, the Israeli army does not seem to be confident about uh, um, uh, kind of uh, sending their troops inside the Gaza yet, despite uh, bombing uh, the territory uh, so heavily, despite war giving repeatedly warning against the international law for the residents, including the hospitals where the uh, thousands of Palestinians have been admitted uh, uh, due to the uh, uh, injuries uh, created by the war and all. Um, despite all of that, it seems that Israel is not confident enough at this moment to kind of start its ground offensive, and it has been delayed again. So uh, um, uh, this uh, the bombing has continued on Monday as well, as you rightly pointed out, uh, and 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 uh, it is not 60, by the way, uh, uh, as it is said that the 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 figure of the death. Uh, the casualties is increasing hour by hour. So uh, more than 200 people have been killed since uh, uh, the morning today, uh, uh, sorry, to, uh, morning on Monday. And uh, mm. it seems the numbers are going up every hour because the bombing continues at the, at the time when we are talking about it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thanks for pointing it out. And, and, and again, also uh, for our viewers, it's impossible uh, for us or anybody to actually have uh, very updated numbers because the, the, the Palestinian authorities themselves, the Ministry of Health and others who are putting out these numbers are engaged in uh, relief work in rescuing people from the rubble uh, where these airstrikes hit. They have very thin, uh, thinly stretched resources and are, uh, often it takes years if not longer to get people out uh, and only then can any figures be determined once you know, families report people as missing, and 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 uh, families manage to contact authorities and and such. Uh, so numbers continually being updated, but we know for sure uh, that over five thousand Palestinians have now five thousand Gazans that is uh, have been killed in Israel's offensive uh, since October seventh. Uh, Abdul. Uh, just sort of proceeding on, on on the updates front, what are you hearing about uh, humanitarian aid coming in? Uh, the last reports I saw, and again, these might not be updated numbers, but a handful of trucks have been allowed in, uh, which uh, those who are actually doing the work in the distribution say is not even 1% of the daily requirement of you know, what a million or so residents require. Exactly. In uh, of course, the uh, the aid started have started uh, has started flowing in into the Gaza uh, Strip from the Rafah border uh, 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 during the weekends. Uh, against the Friday, it was uh, hoped that the the aid will start flowing in, but it did not happen because the repair work was going on. Finally, start late on Friday, early on Saturday. Finally, some aid, uh, twenty trucks, moved in, and since then there have been. Uh, 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 there have been reports of another set of trucks moving in 
on uh, uh, Friday, uh, sorry, on Sunday as well. But as you rightly pointed out, this is a very small amount. Uh, despite the fact that a large number of countries have sent aid to uh, Egypt, uh, from there it is expected to move into uh, Gaza through Rafah border. Uh, Israelis are not letting uh, a large number of trucks to move in. And each time there is a movement, there has to be kind of a coordination done with the Israelis that they do not bomb uh, these convoys because Rafa, uh, as we all know, has been targeted repeatedly uh, uh, by the Israeli uh, air, air forces ever since October 7. And 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 it can and and uh, Israeli uh, forces have targeted uh, anything which moves across the uh, uh, within the territory of Gaza. So the the fear of uh, uh, Israeli uh, uh, bombardment on the air aid uh, trucks uh, uh, is one reason apart from the fact that the Israelis do not want uh, enough amount of aid to reach. Uh, as we all know, there has been a blockade imposed. Or, uh, of course, Gaza is under blockade for last 16, 17 years. But uh, ever since uh, uh, October 9, uh, Israeli, uh, Israel basically announced that it will not let any uh, uh, aid, uh, whether it is fuel or whether it is food or medicine, to reach uh, uh, Gaza until uh, 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 Palestinian, rebel for, uh, Palestinian resistance forces release all those uh, Israelis which they have taken hostage. And, and that basically, uh, that uh, uh, ultimatum which was given has continued even uh, now. And because of that, uh, a large number of uh, 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 hospitals in uh, occupied uh, Gaza, uh, uh, occupied Gaza ha have been basically uh, kind of on the verge of uh, seizing their operations. In fact, uh, as per the uh, uh, UNRWA's uh, claim, which was reported earlier, um, uh, half of the hospitals, there are 20, 20 hospitals around inside Gaza and half of them, around 10 of them, have almost stopped functioning because there is no electricity and which basically makes it difficult uh, uh, for the uh, all the uh, equipments which run on electricity to function. Apart from that, there are, there are also reports that there are not enough medicines, there are not enough bed and, so, uh, uh, and, and all of this. Uh, uh, is not reaching uh, Gaza on time because of the Israeli restrictions imposed. So uh, this is one. Uh, there is also a report that the, the because of the lack of fuel inside uh, uh, Gaza, the the only power station which is running uh, on the reserve fuel for the last uh, uh, two weeks may shut down uh, uh, on, uh, in the coming days and there will be completely blackout uh, uh, in the territory. UNRWA has not been able to distribute food and other uh, uh, material which is already has inside uh, the occupied Gaza because uh, uh, lack, lack of fuel for their trucks within which can move inside the territory to distribute that food, take that food, uh, food from uh, uh, the, the, the go-downs of UNRWA to the affected people. And because of that lack of movement of the trucks, because of the lack of the fuel, because uh, the, the food distribution has been stopped to a very large number of people. And uh, one should remember that uh, uh, UNRWA is holding around half a million uh, uh, Palestinians who have been displaced because their homes were destroyed uh, uh, by the Israelis bomb, uh, by in Israeli bombing in last two weeks. So this is there are many uh, more uh, problems with the Gazans are facing on the ground. It is very difficult to narrate all of them uh, 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 because the complexity of that, uh, that uh, situation is so vast. But the, the one thing which, is, uh, which one should remember always that uh, it seems that Israelis do not, even if they know all these details, they are not yeah. willing to uh, uh, kind of uh, concede any ground. They are not willing to uh, uh, allow the uh, uh, the people who are suffering on the ground in Gaza, the innocent people, to kind of get any kind of relief because they think this is their uh, uh, only way to kind of uh, uh, win over the uh, the territory in Gaza or kind of quote unquote what they claim to kind of defeat the Palestinian resistance. Um Abdul, we'll, we'll talk a bit more uh, about that later on also with Anna in terms of how uh, the resistance on a political front 
is shaping up uh, around the world uh, as well, and we've touched on it previously. Uh, one aspect or one constituency when it comes to, when, when we talk about the whole Palestinian situation, uh, that is a, a key constituency that we haven't so far talked about on debrief, and maybe you're the right person to talk to, is the Palestinian prisoners uh, from the West Bank. Now we've talked before about uh, the administrative detention policy and how people are just picked up and held uh, endlessly without charge, without evidence, without any requirement for any of those things. Uh, since October 7th, the numbers of those who have been picked up in the West Bank have also gone up dramatically. Yeah. I think reports were indicating over a thousand people, uh, if uh, yeah. hundreds for sure, uh, have been arrested. What is happening on that front in the West Bank uh, as well in terms of showing solidarity with a part of uh, their people who they, of course, cannot have any other contact with? Well, uh, there are, uh, of course, not at the level uh, as we saw during the beginning of Operation uh, Alexa Flood. Of course, not at that level, but of course, there has been uh, uh, resistance. In fact, uh, before the current offensive started, uh, West Bank was the hotbed of all kinds of uh, resistance against the Israeli occupation, and that continues to be so. And in fact, that is the reason what uh, I think we've, we've already talked about, that how even ever since October 7, the Israeli offensive, apart from uh, bombardments uh, in, in Gaza, the, the, the Israeli occupation forces have started uh, raids, an uh, increased number of raids, all across uh, the West Bank, fearing that there will be a similar kind of uh, uh, action taken by Palestinians in, from inside West Bank. And because of that increased uh, operation they, um, uh, they have unleashed, uh, the number of uh, deaths have increased, the number of uh, people who have been wounded, uh, more than 1,600, the number of people who have been arrested has, have also gone up. And one should remember, uh, one should know that this at this particular moment, uh, there is no division between Gaza and uh, the West Bank, despite the political differences between Hamas and uh, uh, the Palestinian Authority for, uh, uh, for a very long time. Uh, it seems that the Palestinians at this moment, uh, though are not, uh, 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 there is no uh, Operation Alexa flood in West Bank, but there is a similar kind of uh, solidarity and uh, resistance inside uh, occupied West Bank. And that basically, if you see on Sunday, uh, uh, the number of people, uh, Palestinians who were arrested in one raid uh, uh, was more than 120 uh, uh, by the Israeli occupation forces, because it seems that the Israelis are scared that if the similar uh, uh, outbreaks of resistance happens from the West Bank, it would be difficult for them to. And therefore, they are trying to kind of uh, attack the West Bank in what they call the preemptive uh, uh, mode. And that is that explains the increased number of uh, deaths and casual, uh, other casualties in occupied West Bank. All right. Thanks very much, Abdul, for uh, all of those updates. Uh, this Monday on, on Daily Debrief, and, and we hope that you will be joining us uh, now regularly uh, also to help out with the coverage. Uh, we're not done, though, uh, with our uh, sort of coverage on of Gaza uh, on Daily Debrief today. Anna now joins us uh, from Zagreb, Anna Bracha, a regular on the show. Uh, Anna, good to see you. Uh, there has been an outpouring of solidarity steadily, of course, around the world ever since October 7th uh, for, uh, for uh, pro-Palestinian protests have been held around the world. And, and in Europe, uh, particularly, pressure is mounting on governments who are taking one stand and the people who are demonstrating uh, something else. Uh, yes, so, you know, for once, it's a positive news from uh, that we can see in Europe, because if we look at the headlines in the mainstream media over the last couple of weeks, we've seen them going from the hundreds, hundreds of people rally in support of Palestine to now having thousands of people uh, coming to the streets in support of, uh, of the Palestinian struggle. Uh, just this weekend, we saw massive, massive rallies in both London and Brussels. In Brussels, there were around 40,000 people gathered uh, in, the, in the roundabout just next to the European Union institutions, which is quite symbolic 
as we know that the European Union uh, and related bodies have taken a very problematic approach to, uh, to what's going on in Palestine right now. Uh, and this was also a way to show that uh, the will of the people and the feeling of the people is very, very different from what the European U Union officers uh, are trying to make it be. Uh, so that's that's one thing that uh, we have seen in Brussels. Another another thing which is uh, has also been echoed in other countries as well uh, over the past week is that we're seeing a very wide coalition of groups coming together to support uh, to support the people of Palestine and the people of Gaza in particular. Uh, there were um, the the group that organized the rally in Brussels was made from trade unions to civil society organizations, but also to local Palestine groups. Uh, so it's really, you know, uh, bringing together very different people. And what we have heard from activists on the ground is that the atmosphere and the feeling coming out of this protest is very positive, not only because it's this kind of great moment which shows that uh, the people of Europe stand behind the people of uh, that support the people of Palestine, but also because it's it has not been the feeling that it's a one-time thing. So it's something that's essentially showing that uh, this is something here to stay and that it's going to grow uh, in order to pressure the European European officers to take uh, to take to take a stand against uh, Israel's actions. And this is a very similar to what we have seen in London as well, where the rally was even more massive. Uh, so it was around 100,000 people in London uh, over the weekend. It was the second rally of this sort. Uh, and of course, you know, we talk about London, we talk about Brussels. It has to be said the similar rallies, maybe smaller, are taking place in many other cities, in the UK, in Belgium, in all across Europe. But essentially, the one in London was significant because... Uh, it kind of um, brought together uh, the shared demands that uh, people across Europe have put in front of their government uh, when this is concerned. And that's immediate ceasefire, uh, pushing Israel to allow for an immediate uh, supply of medicines, of food, of water, of everything that we know people are missing right now. Uh, and of course, then also to push for investigation into Israeli war crimes that uh, and um, and acts of genocide that we have seen happening over uh, over the past uh, weeks. So uh, all these people together uh, are kind of building up towards what can be what can be called a shared perspective, at least a perspective that that many left groups in Europe share, uh, and that. Uh, are essentially trying now to find ways to to push it on on their local local level. And and, and what sort of response has this received uh, from those in positions of power, Anna? Because uh, London significant also because we saw Rishi Sunak among the first and most visible of Western leaders to visit Israel and 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 demonstrate his solidarity with uh, and of course Israel and reiterate Israel's right to defend itself without making any real substantial moves to ensure the kind of humanitarian relief uh, that yeah. you were talking just now? Well, yeah. So, I mean, uh, it's always difficult to talk about Europe in this context because it never makes sense. Uh, and of course, if you're being reasonable. So what we have seen as a response from the, from the governments of Europe uh, has been in some way an attempt to limit the demonstrations, the pro-Palestinian demonstrations that we are seeing. Uh, we have talked about it also here on the show before. So we have seen Germany and France very early on taking a very hard stand towards it. France at one point just out, just banned all the, all the Palestinian protests or at least try to do so. Uh, it is now revising um, requests on a case-by-case -case basis, which means that some might, some rallies might happen, others might not. Uh, but essentially, a general response was that um, the pro-Israeli uh, uh, rallies are not affected at all, while the pro-Palestinian ones are under, under heavy scrutiny in one or in the other way. Uh, this includes uh, a very strong presence of the police forces when the rallies are take, uh, taking place. Uh, but it's also extending to some mm, some quite problematic things which border uh, with impedition of free speech. Uh, so, for example, you know, in, some governments and some police forces have uh, had a problem with uh, with chanting "Free Palestine" during the protests. Uh, 
interpreting it as a call to, um, you know, for as anti-Semitic, and in that was one one of the interpretations. Uh, of course, the official interpretations of that, uh, as also illustrated by some more recent court practices, is that of course chanting "Free Palestine" on a pro-Palestinian rally uh, should not be a problem at all. Uh, but again, the reinterpretation went into into that direction. Uh, we have also seen in Germany again uh, examples of um, uh, education authorities trying to ban stickers or posters reading "Free Palestine." So essentially, it's uh, quite uh, a heavy revisionist uh, movement that we're seeing uh, that we're seeing in Europe. And what's most worrying is that uh, you know many people who have been active in the Palestinian uh, cause for for a long time, especially in Germany. Uh, are telling about how they're scared of uh, of providing a different opinion, of, of speaking up uh, in support of uh, of Palestine, because they're afraid of what might happen. That uh, they're afraid that they, they might get persecuted, that they might yeah. uh, get attacked. So that's um, kind of an overview of what we're seeing right now. Yeah, and uh, definitely uh, social media are also playing a major major role in that. Uh, revisionist uh, movement, Anna, that you were talking about, uh, and something perhaps we can get into in further detail later on in the week. But we are we are pretty much at the end of uh, almost a half hour, so we'll leave it there. Uh, from Anna, myself, and the entire team at People's Dispatch, thank you very much for watching this episode of the Daily Debrief. Uh, for details on all of these stories, of course, and all of the other work we do, as always, uh, head to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and give us a follow on the social media platform of your choice. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, thanks for watching.